Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. Uh, notice that I'm not wearing a t-shirt today like I normally am, and I'll explain that to you in a second here. But what I wanted to go over today was a lot of the reasons why people come to Jiu Jitsu. It, it could be any school. It could be the school you're at, it could be the school I'm at, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's really kind of one of three different reasons. Number one is I want to learn self-defense. I want to learn this art called jujitsu because it's supposed to be the best self-defense martial art in the world, right? Number one. Number two is, maybe a secondary one is, I want to get in shape. I want to be in the best shape of my life. Number three would be, I've got friends and they compete in jujitsu, or I watch this UFC and I see how people are doing MMA and, you know, I'd like to start to compete and I'd, and I'd like to get that start with jujitsu. Or it could be, I might have been a wrestler in high school and, and... I, I want to have that, that competition uh, feeling all over again, right? So those are the three ones, right? So self-defense, get in the best shape of my life, and compete. <clears throat> so those are the reasons what motivates people to do it. Now, to get to that point, right, to, to learn self-defense, really, you just need to kind of come into class and just learn what we do in class. To compete, you need to not only learn them, but you need to now pit yourself against an opponent, uh, a random opponent, right, in, in a tournament and, and be able to do that. But to tie these two together, to tie the self-defense and the competition together, you need to be in relatively good shape. Here's one thing that I've found. <clears throat> People who are whatever shape they are and they train, that's not the only thing that you can that you need to do to get into the best shape of your life, right? I've seen guys that train for years, you know, and they're, you know, heavy guys, right? Maybe they're 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. When they start jujitsu, and let's say a year, two, three years later, they might be maybe 10 pounds less overweight, but they're still overweight. The reason has to do with diet, Right? There's an expression that I, that I read a long, long time ago when I was in high school, early college. I used to read bodybuilding magazines. And I remember one particular female bodybuilder saying that people ask me how I get in shape. And I say, what do you mean by shape? Well, you know, I want to be lean like you. And she says, that's just what you eat. Well, no, but I want to know what exercises and stuff to do. No, it's what you eat. So she finally said, abs are made in the kitchen, not in the weight room. And as I've gotten older and I've, I've always had that thought in the back of my mind, I realized the wisdom of that. And it is true. <clears throat> you can work out all you want, but if you're fat, you're going to be, you're going to have muscles under your fat, but you're still going to be fat, right? So if the goal of your goal is to lose body fat and not be fat, you have to eat correctly. Now, what is eating correctly? It depends on you. <clears throat> you have to kind of experiment with it. Because for me, what I've found is that if I don't eat stuff that I'm allergic to, for instance, I'm, I'm allergic to wheat, especially, right? When I was, I guess, uh, you know, I grew up in Hawaii, so we ate rice all the time. But as I got older, I started to have money, you know, in college and all that. And, and I'd go out to eat. I liked Italian restaurants. So I ate a lot of pasta, ate a lot of bread, um, you know, a lot of wheat, you know, it's just, that's just kind of how it is. And I always get a runny nose and stuff. And then I read a book a while back. It was called Eat Right for Your Type. And I have no idea if it's correct, correct science, or if it's just pseudoscience. But it basically said that me, I have a, a blood type O, right? Which is the most common blood type in the world. So I hear like 60 to 80% of us have type O blood. People that have a blood type of O do not do well eating wheat and dairy. The two major ones. So what does that mean? Pizza, <laughs> out the window, right? But what I did was I did a 30 day try and I just simply eliminated wheat and dairy from my diet for 30 days to see how it went. And lo and behold, my allergies stopped. And I thought, wow, like, you know, so at least now I know because I don't get seasonal allergies. A lot of people say, you know, the, the cedar or whatever is out in the air right now and I'm getting all these allergies. For me, myself, and those things don't affect me. What affects me is when I eat wheat. So another thing that I like, Chex Mix, right? I love Chex Mix. I'd go to Costco, I'd buy these huge bags and I could I could eat it in one sitting. Of course, I throw the pretzels out because I hate pretzels, but you know, but everything else I would eat. And 
it never worked out well for me. I, I felt like crap. So I cut all those stuff out. And what I've learned over time is what works best for me is to eat largely a meat-based diet. So it could be beef, it could be chicken, it could be fish uh, with, uh, with no, I don't eat sides. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't eat fries. Um, in fact, you know, there was a time early this year where I was on kind of a sweet potato fries kick because, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I'm doing well, you know, why don't I just, you know, eat some sweet potato fries because they're supposed to be good, right? Anyway, I got massive inflammation and what happened was um, I had uh, rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. So this hand was completely swollen. Um, my right foot was starting to ache. Um, it was really bad. I was limping. I had a hard time walking. Uh, people thought it was gout, but I tested negative for gout, negative for RA. I went to a rheumatologist and they went and ran the blood panel on me and I tested negative for every type of arthritis that there is. So he says, really, it comes down to inflammation. And I think, what did I do that was different that brought on that, that disaster in my life? You know, I couldn't train for probably two months because I was in pain somewhere and it, was, and it was bad pain. I think it was the sweet potato fries because I was eating them a lot. You know, I'd go to, I, I like burgers, right? But I always get burgers without the bun, right? So in, in, in those of you in California and now in Texas, we have In-N-Out Burger and we call that protein style or even there's one called the Flying Dutchman where you get nothing but meat and cheese. So I used to eat protein style all the time where you get, it, they would do it a lettuce wrap and stuff. But now I just eat Flying Dutchman. But I'll go to another restaurant. Wherever they have burgers, I'll order a double, right? Double burger. I want to have around a pound of meat with cheese and no bun. You know, whatever sauce they put on it, condiment, whatever. It's, it's good. I just, you know, don't really do ketchup. Uh, but that's what I'll have. And then I'd have sweet potato fries. I think, you know, as long as I don't have wheat, I'm good. No, the fries killed me. Uh, it turns out fries are very bad for you um, for a number of reasons, um, but which we can go over later. But for what happened was for me was that I, I needed to just basically eat meat. <laughs> um, I do have a vice and everybody here in, in, in Flower Mound, they know what it is and it's ice cream. You know, I love ice cream. Uh, when I'm really bad, you know, I eat a pint of haagen every day. And I, you know, so I, I can kind of kind of gauge how I'm doing. And, but I eat really well outside of that. You know, I'll go to barbecue, I'll eat brisket or whatever and, and just eat the meat or, and, um, you know, ribs. But I, I don't eat sides, like I said. Uh, but I will eat ice cream. You know, that's like I said, that's a vice of mine. But I can control that. I can just simply not do it. If I don't do it, then everything kind of gets back into, into, you know, into sync and alignment. And then I can later on, I'll, I'll eat it. But, you know, by, by and large, I eat very well. I don't drink soda. I drink very little alcohol. Um, if, if any, I, in fact, I haven't had a drink in probably, I don't know, two, three weeks. And when I do, you know, sometimes we'll have some at the studio and we have these white plastic cups, you know, and I'll have like that much in it, you know, I just like the smell of it. That's what it is. You know, and I'll go to all these whiskey distilleries, you know, when I travel and, and I just like whiskey, but I just don't drink it. Right. I don't drink that much of it, but I, I, I like the whole process and all this pretty cool to me, but it doesn't mean you have to drink a lot. I don't smoke. Uh, I don't do weed. I don't do stuff like that. I mean, I may do a gummy here and there, but very rarely. And what that does, you know, by living for me, at least living this lifestyle and training, you know, and I don't train as much as I used to train. I get on the mat probably three days a week. I mean, I'm on the mat, you know, all the time teaching. But as far as me training, it's, you know, I don't train that hard anymore only because I've got all these injuries and I really don't want to be out because of an injury, but I know the benefit of the exercise itself. So I do do it. In our new location in Flower Mound, we have a very small weight room, which I'll use from time to time. I'd say on average once a week and I don't go heavy anymore. I'm not as strong as I used to be when I was a lot younger, but I, I do it moderately. Right? But the key to it is the diet. I, you have to eat well. So if you're doing jujitsu, you know, and you want to get better, you can be good technically and still be fat. Because the better your technique, the more efficient your movement, you don't really need to be in optimal shape to be able to do well in jujitsu. Now, on the other hand, if you're just kind of coming up, up through the, the ranks, white belt to blue belt, and you get your, your you get beat, right? It could be because you're winded. Uh, if you smoke, you might want to stop, you know, that'll help your wind right away. Otherwise, like I tell people, if you go 15 or 20 minutes through the warm up and you're, you're ready to vomit, 
just stop, right? Don't, don't push past that because you will vomit and that doesn't really do you any good. Instead, just stop and then look at the clock and say, okay, I made it 15 minutes today. Come back to class tomorrow. We do the same warm up every day. If you can make it to 16 minutes before wanting to vomit, then, then that's good. If you reach 16 minutes and you still feel good, go to keep going until you feel it again. And when you feel it again, look at the clock and go, oh, this time I went 21 minutes. All right, stop. Do it again. You know, within 30 days, you'll be doing the entire warm up, no problem. Right. And then, you know, forget, you know, and, and, and in class as well. So that's how you kind of build it. But it's going to get to a point where you're going to want to push higher, push further, push faster, push harder. And something is holding you back. A lot of times it's your diet. Go through and clean up your diet. If you eat processed foods, meaning anything comes in a package, stop eating it. Or if you can't help it but eat it like the way I was with Chex Mix, eat a smaller portion. And then a smaller portion and a smaller portion. And, and then keep track of it and delete it within 30 days. You will feel better, right? The processed foods are no good. Right? It's, you know, when you go to a grocery store, you're supposed to, you know, basically shop the perimeter of the, of the, of the store, right? Fruits and vegetables on one side, which I don't do, but, you know, there's, I know they're good, right? And I walk around, you hit the meat counter, you know, where I go, and then I hit the, the dairy. I don't do dairy, but, you know, I, I hit the eggs, right? And then I get the eggs and I come back out to the front and, and I pay, you know, sometimes I'll go into the center where the ice cream is, right? Mm, not good, but, you know, sometimes I'll still do it. Uh, but that's kind of how I do it. As far as what I drink, usually black coffee. However, I got I got strep throat <laughs> uh, when I got back from my my summer summer tour. I got strep throat, and it was a really bad bout of strep throat, and and uh, I was in so much pain, right, throat and headaches and all that, that I didn't even I, I I couldn't even go out and get my coffee every day like I normally would, and I went through coffee withdrawals without even knowing I went through it. <laughs> So I don't have to drink coffee either now. I mean, I do drink it, but I drink maybe less than a cup a day and, and I'm good to go with that. So I, I'm not to say the coffee's bad. You know, I, I drank it black, so there's not that many calories in black coffee and there's certainly no sugar. But I've had to do that because my insulin resistance has kind of been picking up. So what is resistance? It's kind of similar to... Um, uh, being, you know, building your alcohol tolerance, right? You used to get drunk. I used to get drunk off of one can of beer. Now I can drink six, a six pack and, and I'm feeling the same. What's happening is your body's becoming numb to it so that you, you know, you, it takes more to get that same high that you're used to, right? I've never done hard drugs, but from what I understand, the best feeling ever was the first hit of cocaine, right? After that, you keep doing it to try to replicate the feeling you had from that first hit. And that's the same thing with alcohol and the same thing with sugar, right? The more sugar you put into your body, your body gets to the point where you need more to, 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 you need more insulin to deal with the sugar and your body just keeps pumping out the insulin and correct me if I'm wrong, you doctors out there, but your body becomes tolerant to insulin, meaning that insulin doesn't have, you know, a drop of insulin doesn't have the same effect that it did years ago, right? Now I might need 10 drops of insulin to do the same thing. And insulin is very bad for your body if you have it in large doses, right? You know, insulin serves a purpose, but when you, you create the environment where you, you need to flood your cells with insulin, then that could be a problem. How do you flood that? How do you flood your cells? By having too many carbs, too many sugars, right? So that's why for me, you know, once I hit my 50s or late 40s, or whatever, I realized I need to basically cut sugars out because my A1C was very high. Those of you my age, you've got your blood work done and your A1C basically is the level of long-term sugar in your body. And that's that's not a good thing to be high, you know, a high A1C. Uh, because what happens is that, that, that gets you into the pre-diabetic range and then into the type two diabetic range, which is really bad because diabetes is probably the worst thing that could happen to us. Probably even worse than being, you know, being a smoker. Because diabetes affects so many organs within our, or so many organs within our system that it really jacks you up. So, if there's one thing that you need to realize is that you need to deal with as little sugar as possible. Because sugar, in an absolute sense, is energy, but too much of it can be a poison, and, and that's kind of how it is with a lot of things. Um, and then I, like I said, I don't eat vegetables, and a lot of it has to do with. Um, 
uh, the fact that most plants you can't eat, right? Can you imagine walking out in the forest or whatever and you're hungry and you just go and grab, you see a plant on the ground, you just grab it and start eating it? What's the chances that you'll, you'll get sick and die? You know, they're pretty high, right? Whereas you see an animal, right? You go and kill the animal and you skin it and gut it or whatever. What's the chances that you'll be fine eating it? Very high, right? Um, I don't know about bugs. I don't care about bugs. I won't eat a bug. But, you know, I'm just thinking plants versus animals, right? So for you to have your optimal experience in jujitsu, because that's what it's about at the end of the day, do your jujitsu, learn your concepts, practice your techniques, you know, repetition over and over and over. And if you want to then get to that next level, eat as correctly for your body as you can. And the only way to do that is to experiment. And the thing is, don't have the mindset of having to get on a diet, right? What they say, the first three letters of diet is what? Die, right? So, but you need to, and you need to do it gradually, and you need to make it a lifestyle. You need to make it to where, you know, how we got into the lifestyle of eating the carbs, we need to get out of that lifestyle of eating all the carbs and sugars and eat something else that's better for you. Like, like I said, for me, what's better for me is to eat meat. You know, meat, fish, and chicken. I don't eat as much chicken, though, but um, I do eat a lot of meat, mostly beef, uh, because I don't really have access to game meat. Uh, beef is easy, lamb is easy. Um, I'll eat pork, too. Um, but I wish I had more access to game meat, but I really don't. Um, but I would otherwise, right? And then fish, uh, stay away from farmed fish. So tilapia, growing up in Hawaii, you know, I see a big thing right now, everybody eats tilapia. You go to all the stores and you go to restaurants, they serve tilapia. Uh, I grew up in Hawaii and in Hawaii, when we go fishing, we catch tilapia, we throw that back. Why? Because tilapia is a rubbish fish, right? Don't eat tilapia, it's a piece of crap fish. Uh, but even and, and but anything farmed even farmed salmon don't eat farmed salmon eat only wild salmon uh any fish that you eat you want to make sure it's wild uh, you want to make sure it's not farmed um you know chicken you know when you see about how how a lot of chickens are raised you know they're just in coops and stuff or they're they're in a in a in a big warehouse and they're all crammed in there yeah not the best right you know you want to eat the pasture raised ones uh, but, you know, like with eggs, you know, I eat pasture-raised eggs. I mean, they're more expensive. They're like $7 a dozen here, you know, in Texas. But when you think about it, if I eat six, if I eat a half a dozen eggs in one meal, which, you know, is a meal, for me at least, half of $7 is uh, $3.50. So, you know, how many of us spend more anywhere, you know, more than three fifty to get something to eat, right? And then, but they'll look at a dozen eggs and they'll see that it's about eight, seven, eight bucks a dozen. They go, oh, that's too expensive. I'm not going to buy it. Well, no, eggs are some of the best foods you can eat. So, you know, especially if they're good eggs, right? So get the good eggs, eat a half a dozen, or if you're really hungry, eat a dozen. Still, that's seven dollars for a meal if you ate the whole dozen, right? Any any fast food place that you go, even Chick Fil A, you're going to spend more than that, right? Um, and if and, and for the same volume of food. But these are high quality calories and you got to eat the whole egg too. Eat the fat too. Don't be afraid of fat. You know, I, I grew up thinking to myself, I can't eat fat, but it's, it's the opposite really. You know, I'd eat more carbs, rice, and I'd eat less fat. I'd peel the chicken skin off and I'd trim the fat off of the steak that I eat. No, you got to eat, eat the fat. You need it. Because, eat, you know, eating fat doesn't make you fat. Eating sugar makes you fat. That's what I've come to learn as well. So I hope this conversation was helpful to you uh, for you to kind of get to that next step when you're training. You know, you want to optimize your, your body so that you can train and you can be at the highest level, right? You know, like I said, you, know, you come in to learn self-defense uh, or you come in to learn, you know, you want to get to competing, but you want to get in the best shape of your life. And the way to get in the best shape of your life is a combination of all three, right? Because your, your food that you eat is your fuel. The exercise is really the the lighter, you know, the spark that, that, that lights the fuel. If you have crappy fuel in your body, then you're going to have a crappy training experience. So eat really well and, and do this challenge. I'll, I'll challenge you. Do it for 30 days, right? Um, if you want to do what I do, that's fine. You know, the I know the Gracie family, they're very, they're very much fruitarians, right? Eat a lot of fruit, but they don't eat any processed foods at all. Uh, their thing is the combinations, you know, that's, that's a lifestyle thing for them. I've tried it and I did it for a while and I've never been 
fat, for lack of a better term, a day in my life. But I've done jujitsu since 1989, right? And, and I've been aware of the importance of diet um, from House and Gracie, Horry and Gracie, Hicks and Gracie, you know, from, from basically day one of my training. So, uh, you know, I've always been looking for ways to, to fine tune my body uh, so that I can be healthy, right? I don't care about the way I look. I am what I am, right? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not into body sculpting and stuff. You see all these people on Instagram and all that. No, I'm not that. You know, I'm 54 years old. I'm too old for that shit. So, um, but at the same time, I do want to be healthy. And 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 for me, being lean is healthy. And, you know, I, I come from a family where at least my mom and dad, you know, they didn't live very long. They weren't super healthy. You know, I'm healthier, I think, than both of them were. And, you know, maybe I'll live a little bit longer, you know, but the way I look at it is, you know, if, if the cards are, are stacked against me, then I need to do what I can to be in as good a shape as possible so that I can, you know, enjoy my life a lot longer. And, and the thing is, you know, since I don't really, I don't really eat a ton, I don't live for food, uh, food, I eat for fuel, but I do want to make sure it tastes good. I'm not going to eat something that tastes like crap. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not driven by food. So mentally, if you are driven by food, try to find a way to not be driven by food. And one way to, one way I did it is I just fasted. I just didn't eat, right? And you get hungry and I just ignore it. Like, yeah, whatever, you know? And I go find something else to do, right? We call that changing your pattern, you know? The pattern might, you know, the pattern of your body is at mealtimes, it wants to, to get hungry and it's telling you it's time to eat, it's time to eat. When you really don't need to eat, Right? So what I do is I just go, oh, I'm kind of feeling hungry. Let me go do something else. Let me go check the oil in my car, right? Something, you know, just something to get my mind off of eating. And eventually your body will go, okay, well, I guess we're not gonna get food at this time. So your body kind of tones down and it stops giving you those signals that you wanna eat. By doing that, you won't be food driven anymore, right? Like I said, 30 days. Do, just mark on a calendar, start this, and then mark the end. And just do stuff in 30-day increments, right? It's not too long. I mean, shoot, you can remember what, what was going on for you 30 days ago, can't you? Right? I mean, I can't remember what I ate two days ago. But, you know, I remember 30 days ago, not what I was doing, but what I was, you know, what generally what was happening in my life. Right? And it, it's so easy. And before you know it, those 30 days will be up. And then once the 30 days are up, you ask yourself, what do I feel? Do I feel different? Do I feel stronger? And, you know, you know, stand on a scale. I'm, a, I'm on a scale. And I have a scale in my bathroom. And I just, by habit, every time I wash my hands, I stand on the scale. And I look down, I'm like, yeah, okay. Right? It doesn't change that much, right? Yes, uh, this morning, um, when I stood on the scale, 159.0, right? Um, which is not bad for me. You know, I haven't been in the 150s probably for a few years. You know, I, I typically hover in the mid to high 160s and... You know, it's funny, I get into the studio and people haven't seen me in a while. They go, oh, what's up, skinny, right? I'm like, I don't know, I kind of feel the same, right? But anyway, apparently, I guess I am skinny. Um, but, oh, and the reason why I'm not wearing a shirt. Okay, so, uh, and check. So, here. You know, to the side, to the back, right? So, you know, you know, it's, you know, you have that, you know, those washboard abs, as people say, yeah, and, um, you know, do I do I spend as much time in the gym as the average person? No, right. I, I like I said, I have one available to me, but I I, I'm, I probably go in and I work out maybe once in a good week, twice, right. But I'm on the mat doing jujitsu. But like I said earlier, abs are made in the kitchen, and if you can wrap your head around that, and if you can do that then all kind of other benefits will happen. Mostly internal. And, and you'll feel better, your jujitsu will get better. And if, as, as you feel better, your jujitsu gets better, then everything around in your life gets better as well. So that's my hope for you today. And I hope that this little talk was of value to you. And if it is, please go and share it, right? Now, who am I, Ryan Young? Kama Jiu Jitsu and, you know, um, Kama Jiu Jitsu is uh, Dave Kama's Jiu Jitsu studio and he has three locations. I run Flower Mound, Texas. 
Uh, Ken De Silva runs Austin, Texas, and Master Dave himself runs Irvine, California. And we'd love to have you come by and visit us and come check it out and see what Kama Jiu Jitsu is all about. You know, we not only have the best Jiu Jitsu in the world, uh, we also have a great community of people, right? You come in and, and you'll, you'll feel instantly comfortable with everybody here and you'll love it. Kind of like the way I do. That's why we have most people, they come in, they stay, you know, which is an awesome thing. And we also have our curriculum and our videos online. And they are online at kamajujitsuonline.com where you can sign up for a free trial. You can check out what we do in our studio as far as jujitsu goes. And uh, you can kind of interact with us as well on there. You can also interact in this video too. You know, if you have any comments or suggestions, you know, feel free to throw them in the in the comment section below. Uh, I try to get to them every couple of days and, and answer them. Um, uh, you know, but if I don't answer them, at least I like them, right? Just, just so you know that I, I am paying attention. Anyway, I thank you guys for watching this and please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos. And if you have any questions, just mention them in the comments below. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.